Kate Winslet is one of the most talented actresses in film, not just today, but in any time. Titanic is, frankly, just the icing on the cake. Even without it, she would be in contention for one of the best. Hell, even without Titanic, she would still have six Best Actress or Best Supporting Actress nominations at the Academy Awards. In fact, over a 30-year career, she's won almost every notable award there is to win, and as she's already won an Emmy, Grammy, and Oscar, she just needs a Tony to be an EGOT. Through a combination of luck and skill, success came early and fast. She got her start young, which makes sense when you consider that her father and her grandparents were also actors. She was just 15 when she landed six episodes in the BBC show Dark Season in 1991. But just a few years later, still in her teens, she beat out 200 other actresses to land a lead role in Peter Jackson's 1994 film Heavenly Creatures, which won universal acclaim. Just a year later in 1995, when she was just 20, she earned a Best Supporting Actress nomination for playing Marion Dashwood in Ang Lee's adaptation of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. The film was a critical and commercial success and, coupled with 1996's Jude and Hamlet, also revealed Winslet's apparent love for period films. But 1997 would be the year that propelled Winslet to the top of the A-list when she was just 22. She lobbied hard for the role of Rose in James Cameron's masterpiece, Titanic. The filming of the movie deserves its own video, so I'll suffice to say that through a production as epic as its story, which is as epic as what it's based on, Cameron, Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the rest of the cast and crew made one of the best films of the 90s and certainly the most successful. The movie won critical acclaim, grossed almost $2 billion in its initial run, and created perhaps the most famous romance in film history. Winslet gave everything she had to the role, almost drowning and catching influenza. She made it through to the other side though, and earned a nomination for Best Actress for her troubles, though the award for that year went to Helen Hunt in As Good As It Gets. DiCaprio, meanwhile, wasn't even nominated. After Titanic, Winslet, like DiCaprio, was on top of the world. She could have done any movie or role that she wanted to, but like DiCaprio, she eschewed blockbusters and franchises to focus on indies and mid-budget films, saying she wasn't ready to be a star. It was the right move, I think. Whereas other actors and actresses have risen or fallen by the vagaries of their most popular films, Winslet has remained at the top or near the top thanks to the various roles that she's willing to take on. This is best exemplified with her film right after Titanic, 1998's Hideous Kinky, the story of a single mother who moves from London to Morocco. She remained busy after Titanic and besides 2012, has had at least one film release every year since. Many of them were critically acclaimed and pretty much all of them were small to mid-budget indies. In 2000, she was in Quills, another period film, this one about the final years of the Marquis de Sade's incarceration. 2001's Enigma, about the codebreakers at Bletchley Park during World War II. 2001's Iris, which earned Winslet a nomination for Best Supporting Actress. 2004's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, where she appeared opposite Jim Carrey and, yet again, earned another nomination for Best Supporting Actress in, yet again, a movie that's considered one of the best films of all time. 2004's Finding Neverland, where she acted opposite Johnny Depp. This was one of her most successful films after Titanic, pulling $117 million against a $25 million budget. In 2006, she was in Little Children, where she played a housewife that has an affair with her married neighbor. 2006's Flushed Away, an animated film that flopped commercially on its $149 million budget, but did well with critics. 2006's commercially successful The Holiday, 2008's The Reader, which finally won Winslet an Academy Award for Best Actress, her first and so far only one. In 2008, she also reunited with Leonardo DiCaprio for Revolutionary Road. Though they kept a tight friendship, the kind that's only forged when you almost drown, they were hesitant about co-starring again, knowing it would only bring about comparisons to their most famous movie. That it did, though the movie did get decent reviews. As she entered her third decade as an actress in the 2010s, she remained successful, though the second half of the decade would be marred by a string of critical and commercial failures. But the 2010s did also mark something of a departure from the 2000s, mainly in that she would start taking on some franchise and big budget roles, though the bulk of her work still remained indies, such as 2011's Contagion, one of the rare films that got praise from critics as well as from the scientific community in how it portrayed the spread of a highly contagious disease. 
2013, she was in Movie 43, an ensemble anthology that also starred Kristen Bell, Seth MacFarlane, Anna Faris, Hugh Jackman, Chris Pratt, Emma Stone, and more in what's considered one of the worst movies ever made. You win some, you lose some. In 2014, she had her first franchise film, Divergent, based on a popular series of YA novels. Starring Shailene Woodley, the first entry was a success, as was its 2015 sequel, Insurgent. But neither movie replicated the wild success of the Twilight series or the Hunger Games, and the series was never completed. In 2015, she also earned another Academy Award nomination for playing Joanna Hoffman in Steve Jobs. The Michael Fassbender one, not the Ashton Kutcher one. The second half was something of a critical and commercial morass for Winslet. Though she would get praise for her performances, the movies themselves would not hold up. 2015's The Dressmaker, 2016's Triple Nine and Collateral Beauty, 2017's The Mountain Between Us and Wonder Wheel, and 2020's Black Beauty were all commercial or critical failures, often both. 2019's Blackbird and 2020's Ammonite were two of the few bright spots in that they did okay critically, though not financially. Then, in 2022, she reunited with James Cameron for a supporting role in Avatar The Way of Water, which, typical for Cameron, was a resounding critical and commercial success, grossing $2.32 billion at the box office. In 2023, she was in Lee, a critical success about Lee Miller, a fashion model turned fashion photographer turned war correspondent during the Second World War. She will be starring in HBO's The Regime in 2024 and, assuming Cameron sticks to his timeline, will be reprising her role as Ronald in 2025's Avatar 3. Kate Winslet has remained remarkably consistent and active in a three-decade long career and I'm sure she has many more decades to go. She's not only one of the finest actresses of her generation, she's one of the finest actresses of any generation.